Ambassador, a wide set of images this weekend, and I want to go to the intractable U.S. issue, which you've been so good about, which is Syria. We can talk about Libya and airstrikes. ISIS will do later, Ramadi and all that. Thousands of people on the Syrian-Turkish border. That's got to be a humanitarian crisis as well as a U.S. crisis. Oh, it is. Millions of Syrians have, have, Millions. have been made homeless. Some are inside the country, so-called internally displaced persons, IDPs, and, and uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, have gone into places like Jordan. What does the United States do? How do we project assistance to Turkey or assistance to other parties? Well, we and others have provided some. The problem is the scale of the assistance versus the scale of the problem is a mismatch. Mm -hmm. At some point, the real debate for the United States is whether to create some kind of a large humanitarian space inside Syria. But if you do that, you can't just project it, protect it from the air. You've also got to protect it from the ground. Uh, but Tom's perspective on this is how has this become an American problem or what's the American solution? Uh, the Syrian refugee crisis has also become a European problem. They're going up through Hungary, around through Libya. When we talk about the flood of, uh, of migrants into Europe right now, a lot of those are coming from Syria. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what we've learned in places in Africa now in the Middle East, also in Asia, is what looks like a humanitarian problem very quickly becomes a geopolitical problem and mm -hmm. even a question of war and peace. Uh, th this is exactly fitting, th that template. What is your reading on this phrase partition? I want to do Iraq here in our next session, but to Syria become a partition? Is Yemen get partitioned? What does the word partition mean? Well, I think, you know, what you might call the classic post-World War I Sykes-Picot or Rand McNally view of the Middle East, I'd argue, is over. I don't see Iraq coming mm -hmm. back together. Syria is increasingly hard to see how, uh, particularly if it's a, a minority-controlled government out of Damascus, I can't see that putting, holding sway over the entire country. North and south of Yemen have historically been more divided than, than United. So I don't tell my, this is going to take decades. Yeah. But at the end of it, we're not going <clears> to <throat> end up where we began. And Brendan, Halima Croft this weekend of RBC Capital Markets mentioning three times in my conversation with her about a return to tribal nations. Uh, this, which, like is Somalia. which is something that is very difficult for, for us to, to understand. We, you know, we have this, this, this whole Westphalian understanding of the world. Well, let me, I'm going to throw something. Can I say make one point, though? It's Please, really interesting yeah. in Arabic. There is a difference between the word for state and the word for nation. We tend to use them interchangeably yeah. around tables like this, not in the Middle East. And what we're seeing mm -hmm. is an old Middle East, not the geopolitical one based on states, mm -hmm. but one based on tribe and nation and mm -hmm. other allegiances come to the fore. Well, this is what's going on in Yemen, which I think are, is, is part of our misunderstanding of Yemen, is that we tend to see what's going on right now as al-Qaeda versus a regime, when in fact it's different tribal factions. We have actually something from over the weekend. Uh, ban Ki-moon, uh, Secretary of the UN, uh, 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 spoke about Yemen. We've got that right here. Since May, the fighting has killed more than 2,600 people, half of them civilians. It has destroyed the schools, hospitals, and precious cultural heritage. Uh, today, Yemen's very existence. Uh, hangs in the balance. While parties uh, pick up, Yemen burns. Of course, he's calling for a ceasefire in Yemen. Tom has this, uh, this question of the morning, which is that uh, what flashpoint will cause the guns of August? What's going to cause everything to blow up? Do you see Yemen as, as a place where, uh, where that could happen? It's not a guns of August now. What worries me about Yemen and the historical analogy that comes to mind is Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And I mean this for Saudi Arabia. I think the Saudis are overreaching in Yemen. Iran's role in it was modest to begin with. The Saudis saw, saw it as larger than it was. They're making it a test case. They're using massive amounts of air power. It's not working. So will the Saudis now intervene with other forces? I think increasingly the Saudis could be betting the future of themselves on what happens in Yemen. That's a bad place to make a bet. Okay. Richard Haas with us this hour.